Now let's see the topic on using substitution, finding integral using the substitution. So a definite integral just like the indefinite integral also has some substitutions to be made. Therefore, equally the substitution has its limits equally changing. Say for example, I have to find integral 0 to pi by 4 of dx. So, we have this as the substitution or 0 to 1 of tan inverse x by 1 plus x squared dx. In order to evaluate this definite integral for the function tan inverse x by 1 plus x squared dx, we do not have the direct standard formula, but we try to use some substitutions. So, let us see how the substitution helps. I assume tan inverse x equals some u. Then differentiating on both sides, d by dx of tan inverse x is 1 by 1 plus x squared dx is du. And this very much helps because this can be substituted with du on the right hand side. But the, in this case of definite integral, I have the lower limit which is 0 and the upper limit which is 1. Therefore, once I substitute this equal to u, all the terms, the variables x transformed into u equally transforms the limits of x into limits of u. So, let us find the lower and upper limit for the variable u. So, as I take the lower limit of x which is 0, so when substituted respectively gives the corresponding lower limit of u when I substitute in the function thus. So, x equal to 0 implies u would be tan inverse 0 which is 0. So, this is identified as the lower limit of u. Similarly, the upper limit x when substituted in the value of u gives us tan inverse 1 which is pi by 4 which is called the upper limit of the function f of u. So, this is how we transform the lower and upper limits into the lower and upper limits of u as taken from x, substituted in the substituted function and then we get this whole of the indefinite integral transformed into x running from 0 to 1, but here u running from 0 to pi by 4 <laughs> of tan inverse x which is u and 1 by 1 plus x square dx which is du and this clearly we know is integral x dx which is x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 which is u square by 2 with the limits 0 to pi by 4. Next is substituting the upper limit minus the lower limit. So, 1 by 2 taken common u square is upper limit whole square minus lower limit whole square is what we get. When substituted, this reduces to 1 by 2 of pi square by 16 minus 0, which is pi square by 16. This is nothing but pi square by 16 times 2, which is 32 and therefore integral 0 to 1 tan inverse x by 1 plus x square dx is pi square by 32 is how we identify the definite integral value 
using the substitutions called substitutions method. Next, the property of definite integral here is that if I have integral a to b f of x dx can also be simplified as integral a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. is how we understand the integration of a to b f of x dx is integral a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. Therefore, now that we had the property integral a to b f of x dx is integral a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. If suppose I have to find integral 0 to a f of x dx in this form then this would be integral 0 to a f of 0 plus a minus x dx by substituting each of this as lower limit and this as upper limit in case of this formula. It implies integral 0 to a f of x dx is integral 0 to t f of a minus dx. So, we assume 0 to a f of x dx as 0 to a f of a minus x dx. Next, if I have to find integral of minus a to a f of x dx then we have two formula for this that is when f an odd function and when f is an even function in each of the cases of odd function and even function, integral minus a to a f of x dx is said to be 0 and here it is said to be 2 times integral 0 to a f of x dx. <coughs> so, this is equal to 0 if f is an odd function and this is equal to this if f is an even function. As we recap, the odd function is a function where f of minus x is minus f of x. f is said to be an even function if f of minus x is equal to f of x. That's how we understand the odd and even function. The odd function and even function derive this equal to 0 if f is odd and this equal to this if f is even function. This is the formula we use in case of odd and even function. Now, we have two properties here for which I evaluate integral 0 to 2a f of x dx. So, let us see the two basic properties. Integral 0 to 2a of f of x dx is 2 times of integral 0 to a f of x dx if f of 2a minus x is equal to f of x. But integral 0 to 2a of f of x dx is 0 if Is this. So, using these two properties, this is 2 times of this if this is plus of this and this is 0 if this is minus of f of x is how we identify the two cases for finding or evaluating integral 0 to 2a f of x dx. Now, let us see the integrability of the product.
that is if f and g are integrable is the product integrable is the biggest question f is integrable g is integrable implies we have the property that f g is also integrable or g f which we have is also integrable that is how we understand the property of integrability of the product of two functions f and g f is integrable g is integrable implies f g or g f is also integrable now that we have defined the integrability of the product the immediate question which strikes the mind is integration by parts as that we have seen for the indefinite integral integration by parts is with its specific formula let's see how we can identify the integration by parts for a definite integral which contains the lower and the upper limit bounds so integration by parts for definite integral <laughs> so for definite integral equally let's see how it comes integral of u v dx if i assume the first function as u and v we have directly first function integral of second minus integral derivative of first into integral of second this is how we understand the integration by parts for indefinite integral but when you come to the definite integral a to b of u v dx it is equally the same wherever i have three integrals here i have the limits a to b out there u integral a to b v dx minus integral a to b of u dash integral v of dx is how we identify the integration by parts <coughs> for a definite integral is what we get when we integrate by parts using the limits low limit a and upper limit b is to each of the integrals now let's see one example problem to support integration by parts for a definite integral so for example i have to evaluate integral of x e power x dx with limits from minus 1 to 2 <coughs> so in order to integrate this we use the first function and the second function where this is algebraic and exponential and using a comes first and e comes next and therefore we get x times e power x dx where the first function is this and the second function is this and expanding using the integration by parts i have first function into integral of second minus integral derivative of first into integral of second <coughs> is what we get so expanding by that i have the first function into integral of second function but not to forget the limits minus integral derivative of first into integral of second with limits this of dx is what we get
Now next, expanding by this, integral e power x is e power x with limits minus 1 to 2 using the standard formula of integral e power x. Derivative of x dash is 1 because d by dx of x is 1 and integral e power x is e power x dx is what we get. e power x with limits minus 1 to 2 minus integral e power x which is e power x with limits minus 1 to 2. So we have this as integral e power x using the standard formula as this with not to forget using the limits. Now next comes in substitution of the limits minus 1 to 2. So I have this with minus 1 and 2 overall with the function. So I have this minus 1 to 2 upper limit is 2 times e square minus minus 1 e power minus 1. So each of upper limit minus the lower limit which we get minus the upper limit minus the lower limit is what we get when we simplify using minus 1 and 2 in the substituted formula. This on further simplification gives 2 e square minus of minus plus 1 by e minus e square plus 1 by e. 2 e square minus e square is e square plus 2 by e or you can just leave the answer here or you can simplify with LCM which gives e cube plus 2 by e. Therefore, integral minus 1 to 2 of x e power x dx is e cube plus 2 by e. That's how we identify the property of definite integrals connected with integration by parts. So integral of minus 1 to 2 x e power x dx is e cube plus 2 by e where e is an exponential value or e lies is an irrational number lying between 2 and 3 and e has approximate of value of 2.713 just like pi is 3.14 e has an approximate value of 2.713 an exponential. Now next is the reduction formula as we have seen in indefinite integrals. We are going to discuss about the reduction formula for definite integrals.